Hey everybody, it's your old pal Tristan here, and today we're going to talk about a franchise that's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, this isn't going to be so much a review as a nostalgia trip, but I'll try to keep it simple for you. Uh, last month, Scream Factory put out the Critters movies on Blu-ray for the first time. After years and years of neglect, we can finally throw away those four film favorites DVDs. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the Critters franchise focuses on an alien race of small Tasmanian devil-like monsters called Krites, who bust out of an alien prison, head for Earth, get tracked down by shape-shifting bounty hunters, and end up causing all sorts of chaos. Uh, did I mention they love to eat people? <laughs> As a sick little kid who loved to rewind shots of King Kong or the T-Rex from Jurassic Park eating people over and over again, this was the kind of shit that I ate up when I brought home from the video store. Because uh, yeah, the critters are literally like horror movie versions of the Tasmanian Devil. So the main character of this movie is a kid named Brad Brown, a little redhead who uh, lives on this family farm in Kansas somewhere in a fictitious town called Grover's Bend. Uh, and right away for me as like an eight, nine, ten year old kid watching these movies growing up, I immediately had someone to identify with. You know, the main protagonist is literally a redheaded kid. We also have his best friend, the town drunk, named Charlie, played by Don Opper, and his mom, the perennial 80s favorite, Miss D. Wallace Stone who I didn't even make the connection at the time that this is the same mom from E.T. Anyways, the critters cause all sorts of havoc, the bounty hunters show up. Did I mention their names are Ugg and Lee? <laughs> that was something I didn't even get until like years and years later. Transform. Nothing likes me. Find something. This movie was criticized at the time as being a Gremlins knockoff, but Honestly, it really is its own thing. Outside of being a killer puppets story in a small town setting, uh, there's not a whole lot that it has in common. Uh, if anything, it does feel like a throwback to sort of 1950s B-movies. And not in the same way that Gremlins is, because there's a lot of references to sort of alien invasion culture. The way uh, when Brad and his father go out to look uh, for trouble in the fields and they find the mutilated cattle, it really feels like this story could function just as well in the 1950s as it does in the 80s setting. Uh, outside of the fact that one of the bounty hunters, Terrence Mann, uh, takes the form of a fictitious hair rocker named Johnny Steele. Brad, who did you bring? Charlie and Johnny Steele, who? Basically what this movie feels like is if 80s Amblin and New Line Cinema had a love child and this is what popped out. It's like a hard-edged, bloody version of an Amblin movie. I honestly have no idea how, and not, a, not just this film, but the sequel, Critters 2, where they even get away with a bunch of nudity. I can't believe what they were able to pull off on a PG-13, considering films like Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street were getting bothered by the censors all the time. Uh, the sequels are a lot of fun too. Critters 2, the chaos kind of expands beyond the family farm. The critters completely take over Grover's Bend. This one was directed by Mick Garris, and it's this is where it starts to take on more of the Gremlins rip-off atmosphere. Uh, it's not quite as good as the first film, but it does have its moments. It's really only held back by a couple of little nitpicky things, whether it's continuity or logic being thrown out the window. Uh, but... It's got a guy in an Easter Bunny suit getting murdered by little hairballs that fly into his crotch. So, <laughs> you can't really argue with the entertainment value. Plus, I think out of all four movies, uh, this is probably the one where the Critters effects look the best. Critters 3 and 4, they got way more animated, but they started to look a little more fake. Uh, I don't know, there was just something about it, the way that... As soon as they beefed up the puppets, they started to look less realistic. In the first film is when they definitely look the most realistic because they're like little small, they're critters. They're like little tiny cre creatures. But uh, as as they get bigger, they become more and more uh, puppet or cartoon-like. Uh, the second film is, I think, where they struck the best balance. Uh, and it was never really duplicated in 3 and 4. So just to say something about Critters uh, 3 and 4, these movies were made a few years later because Critters 2 didn't really light up the box office. Uh, they were direct to video and they were shot back to back, basically to conserve costs. Uh, you know, they could use the same sound stages or recycle the same critter puppets, get two films for the price of one, essentially. Uh, 
The real reason I want to talk about these movies is because I was overwhelmed with nostalgia revisiting these in the past month. You're not as smart as you think you are. The Scream Factory release is absolutely beautiful. The transfers are great. Uh, bonus features out the ass. But it was opening up the package for the first time and seeing those covers that I remembered from the video store growing up. And just, they were exactly the way I remember them. The same art, the same look. It was just like something plucked in the back of my brain. Uh, I surround myself with nostalgia. When I like something, I never let go of it. I rewatch it over and over again. The Critters movies were something, though, that kind of skipped a generational gap in my life. Uh, when I was 10 years old, these were movies that I would take out every other weekend, especially Critters 3 for some reason. It's weird because rewatching them now, I watch Critters 3 and I'm like, wow, this one's shit. Like, it's actually probably the worst of the bunch. I never liked Critters 4 when I was younger because it has the least Critters action, but between the two made-for-video movies, uh, I actually prefer number 4 now because it's more suspenseful. Uh, but Critters 3, I would take out like all the fucking time. Same with Critters 2. And these were just movies that I knew backwards and forwards. And I don't know what happened, but when they came out on DVD, I never picked them up for myself. I rewatched them once, like five or six years ago with my brother when he picked up the four film favorites release. Uh, but essentially The Critters was something I binged and absorbed like a parasite when I was a little kid and then never carried on with. And I guess what it basically did is it created this nostalgia factor, but also an air of familiarity. So when I rewatched it, it was like, Oh, here's something I, like here's something I'm not bored of almost. And it was like reconnecting with a part of my childhood that I'd forgotten about. I for, and and realizing things about them that I never realized before. Uh it's very easy to see why the Critters movies appeal to kids cuz each one has uh either a child or a teenager as a lead, as a hero. And we're not going to talk about Leonardo DiCaprio in part three. Everyone knows that that was like one of his first fucking movies. I wish you were dead! But yeah, just like looking at, like this was something that was ingrained into my skull when I was a kid. This image, you know, staring out at me. Or this one with the balls. Or this one. Like all of these movies I remember as like these totems, these VHSs that just called to me. And it was exactly the kind of shit I loved growing up because... It felt a little dark, a little dirt, like I was getting away with something. Because, like I said, these push the PG-13 rating as far as it can go. Uh, but at the same time, it's very child-friendly. There is a fantasy about it. The fact that it's a, you know, alien invasion with Western bounty hunters from outer space and evil Tasmanian devils. And the thing about these movies is they're not mean-spirited. Like, people get eaten, but usually it's just the assholes, and then everyone else comes out okay. There's nothing negative about them. Also, as a franchise junkie, I find it weird to think about the paradoxes between this and the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Uh, for those of you that don't know, in Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, one of the characters is watching the original Critters on a TV. Uh, and then subsequently in Critters 2, one of the bounty hunters tries to shapeshift into Freddy Krueger based off a cardboard cutout they see in a video store which just makes my brain twist in all sorts of ways that I don't even want to process right now. I think the other thing that really helps is Dawn Opper as Charlie. Uh, a lot of horror movies kill off the main characters or they don't carry over between movies. There isn't a straight line besides the monster or the killer. And Charlie, even though he isn't a kid, he's a very childlike character. He's the town drunk who then becomes an intergalactic bounty hunter and a sheriff. He's, you know, the loser done good. And there's something about him that's just so pure and honest. Like, you can tell he's a fuck up, but he's always trying to be a good person. He's always trying to do the right thing. And yeah, I think it's one of the great things about the franchise is the character of Charlie. On Earth, I was just a big nobody. I had one friend and he was just a kid but yeah the critters movies are a lot of fun if you've never seen them you owe it to yourself to check them out and you know what honestly if you have kids out there like especially like in the 8 to 10 set 
show them this shit because this is something that shouldn't miss a generation. This is something that should be passed on and enjoyed. So yeah, just to rank them really quick, uh, when I was a, when I was a kid, it probably went Critters three, two, one, four. Now it's Critters one, two, four, three. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's really unfortunate about Critters three. So yeah, check them out. The Critters movies are awesome. And uh, if you liked this video, be sure to like, subscribe, check out the rest of my movie reviews. I'll catch you all next time.